Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. Welcome to episode two of Shooting Cars, a series of videos that I'm putting out every Thursday at 9 a.m. where I'm gonna teach you how to take better photos of your car or your friend's car. Now, if you haven't watched episode one, I recommend watching that. You'll learn why we use a circular polarizer filter for car photos, a couple of the things you need and how to import into Lightroom. Now in this episode, I'm gonna be covering the three things that angles are gonna do for your car photos. One, they're gonna change the look and emotion of the car. Two, they are going to change the story of your image. We'll talk about that in a second. And three, they're gonna be a huge help when you are trying to um, disguise or um, hide some subjects that are in your image. For example, the dumpsters that are back there or that Mitsubishi SUV. So this is a fairly empty parking lot, thankfully, but um, there are a couple of elements that we wanna hide in the image. So when I'm talking about it changes the story, I wanna show you a picture of the interior gauges of the Miata. Now, uh, these were shot with the no flash mode on the Nikon D90. Again, same lens as last time, same exact setup. Uh, but you can see if I take a photo straight on of the gauges, um, it looks kind of bland. You know, you see the gauges, you see the red line, you kind of understand, um, you know, that it's a high revving car. Maybe you can figure out what car it is from the gauges if you own a Miata. But if you take the photo from a little bit further back at an angle uh, and include some of the steering wheel and in interior, you can understand a little bit more of the interior styling of the car. So you can see that it's got a wooden steering wheel, you can see it's a light interior, and it gives you a lot more to the story, but it still conveys the same thing that here's the tachometer. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more in the image to um, please the viewer and also draw the eye to the tack. So that's one, and uh, you can use the same thing on shift knobs. You can see in my Mini Cooper S, you know, you can shoot the shift knob from flat if you want the buttons in the back, or you can shoot it from up top if you want just a very clean shift knob shot, uh, which is really easy to do in manual cars. Now, what I wanna show you is how to hide things using angles. So first, I'm gonna take a three quarter shot uh, of the Miata, kind of zoomed out. You guys probably can't see me, but I'm gonna polarize the windshield here and take that shot. So there's one, okay? And I just took a couple exposures there so that I'd have one that I'm happy with. So as you can see in this image, it's not bad. Uh, we have the car nicely polarized. We can see through the windshield, but now there's that you know pizza delivery truck or car, there's that dumpster and there's the Mitsubishi. So if I get down real low, you can see that the car's driving by. And when I took it uh, from a lower angle, it was actually hiding the other car that was here, and I got a very clean shot. So you can see that right here, we have a clean shot, but we have a little bit of this Mitsubishi. So what I'm gonna do to move closer to this camera, I'm just gonna get down nice and low, make sure that the dumpsters are covered, make sure the Mitsubishi isn't in the shot, and give a little bit of space in front of the Miata, and we'll take that. Now, you can see the windshield and hood are polarized. What we're gonna do is turn and get the side polarized as well. And in a later episode, I will teach you how to put those two shots together so you have no reflections at all. But if you wanna find out how to do that, I do have a video on my channel uh, and the link is down in the description below. So that's how angles change the story uh, of your photo. That's how angles can help you hide distracting elements in the background. And now we're gonna talk about how angles change the emotion and look of a car. So on a lower car or a smaller car, you wanna shoot from higher up uh, and you wanna shoot going down, that will decrease this wheel gap right here. If you're shooting a car with wheel gap, uh, it'll make it look a little bit lower to the ground. But if you're shooting something like a truck, you can see this lifted truck here, you wanna shoot it from down below, make it look very aggressive, masculine, like it can run you over. Uh, and that depends on what car you're shooting. But you can see that different angles change images just a little bit here and there, uh, but they can be enough of a difference to really matter. So as you can see, like if you're shooting, you know, uh, concave wheels or deep dish wheels, you can see um, that there is a lot more depth added when you shoot from an angle instead of shooting from uh, just straight on. So hopefully this taught you a little bit about angles. If you have any feedback, please let me know, please subscribe. And now what we're gonna do is hop into Lightroom. We're gonna show you how to um, play with the ground a little bit. You know, it's up to you what you wanna do with it, but I wanna show you how to select the ground, how to start making adjustments, and then you are free to play with your images. Or if you want some of mine, let me know, I can put up a Dropbox. Uh, and then we'll get started. So I hope you guys enjoy this series. Let's hop into Lightroom right now and continue. All right, guys, so now we are in Lightroom and I'm gonna basically show you how to make selections of various parts of the image and edit. In this video, I'm just gonna be showing you how to do the ground so you can get an effect kind of like this. You can make the ground darker or brighter, more textured, less textured, whatever you want in your image, but I'm gonna show you how to make the selections and I'm gonna show you another use of this right here. Uh, this truck actually pulled up right after I shot that part outside. You can see there were a lot of distractions behind it, dumpsters, another car parked, 
uh, and I used angles to hide it. Unfortunately, the guys did open the truck, but what I was able to do was take this cone out and also bring the sky in a little bit, uh, bring the ground uh, down, which I'm gonna show you right now, and then also make the reds pop. So we're gonna be talking more about making colors pop and the sky uh, in an upcoming episode, but right now I'm gonna show you how to make a selection. So as you can see, once the selection is made in Lightroom, you can do whatever you want with it. So you can see I have this area that's gonna highlight in green right now, selected. So let's change this to green. And you can see all of this area is selected. And then let's say um, if I wanted to brighten the ground, I could make it super bright. This looks kind of ridiculous, but this just shows you that you have a separate selection on the ground than you do on the car. And then you can do this, let's say you want the wheels to be a little bit brighter. You can make a separate brush on the wheels or you can make the sky darker or the car darker or change colors of things. So many different options. But right now I'm just gonna show you how to make this selection. So let's start with our base image. And keep in mind guys, here I have a uh, .nef file. That's because I'm shooting raw on Nikon. Shooting raw is super important. Make sure you have your camera set to raw. Do not shoot JPEGs, shoot raw on your Canon or your Nikon or whatever camera you have. Even the iPhone 7 and 6S now shoot raw. Um, so that is going to help your editing a ton. It's basically like having a wet painting that you're still working on versus you know a painting that you bought at a store, how much control you're gonna have over the image. But now we're gonna get started. So basically what you wanna do is select the brush from your toolbar. So you can either hit this icon or press K on your keyboard. And what you're gonna do is select the exposure um, mark right here. It doesn't really matter which one you start with, but we're going to go to exposure and then set this either really low down or really high up. And the reason we're going to start with this is so that you know exactly where you're painting. So as you can see, as I start brushing this in, it's going to turn really bright here. Or if I was, you know, really dark, then it would turn that area really dark. Now, a quick tip to make the uh, brush bigger and smaller, um, instead of just using the size thing right here, is hitting the bracket buttons on your keyboard. So left bracket smaller, right bracket is bigger. If you don't know what the brackets are, they are right next to the P key and below the uh, plus equals uh, icon key on your keyboard. So those are the brackets right there and you can change size. Or uh, what I usually do is I change size by scrolling on my Wacom tablet. But anyways, um, what you're gonna do is make the exposure either really bright or really dark so you can see where you're painting. And then to help even more, we're gonna select a color. So I'll select like green or red or basically any color that doesn't have uh, that doesn't match with the image, so there's nothing really red in here. So what I'm gonna do now is simply paint on the ground. So what you're gonna do is move your mouse around uh, while holding down the left click button or your finger on your trackpad or your pen on your tablet, whatever it might be. And we're just gonna move this around and basically select the ground or the area that we wanna work with. Now, uh, there is this feature right here called auto mask on the right side. Auto mask basically is gonna look for contrast and big differences in the photo and try to not select those areas. So let's say I went like over the wheel right here. It will, if it works well, only paint red right there, but not really do red on the wheel since it's a uh, different part of the image. So auto mask is helpful when you're like going under the bumper right here, things like that. It's not always super useful. So what I recommend is actually leaving auto mask off and then uh, just creating a smaller brush when you need to go into details like right here under the side skirts and paint. So I'm going to speed this process up. Uh, this might take you a, a, quite a while on your first try, but let's just paint the whole ground and then we'll continue. Keep in mind also that it is important to do the ground in the whole image. So you can't just do the ground up front here and not add texture or darkness or color change to the back uh, because then you know it'll be really easy to notice that uh, this is edited and in most edits the goal is for it to look as if that's what uh, Real life was like right so if you want to bring texture out It shouldn't be a totally different texture than what the ground actually was it should be an enhancement Right kind of like a hyperbole or exaggeration of what you saw in real life when you captured the image So we're going to continue painting this all right So we have most of the background painted as you can see I didn't really zoom in which is what I recommend you do I did kind of a rough uh, outline right here, but you know for like the bumper things like that I'm going to turn on auto mask 
and it should do a pretty good job. And you'll notice that some of these spots are a darker red than others. So if you go over a spot again, it will actually apply that effect a little bit more, which is kind of annoying uh, with Lightroom. There are definitely better ways to do these same types of effects in Photoshop, but we are just gonna stick with Lightroom for uh, at least the first few episodes until we get comfortable with kind of what we want to edit, because once you know what and how you want to edit, uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier to go out on shoots um, you know, keeping in mind what you want to keep in the image. So this is all selected now, right? It's all red or green or whatever color you made it. So now what we're gonna do is get rid of the color. So we're just gonna bring the saturation down to 0%. Now, if you want to make a, uh, you know, the ground a similar color to the car or, you know, more orange or more green or red or whatever it is, as long as it looks somewhat realistic, you can do it. What I recommend doing there is selecting a color and then uh, changing the percentage to match. But I'm gonna do zero. And actually what I'm gonna do is desaturate. So we're gonna do the exposure at zero now. And basically this is gonna leave us with uh, just a selection that we have. So you see if we turn this on and off, there's no difference made. What I wanna do is bring the saturation down. So as you can see, when the um, saturation is pumped up right here, there's a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue in the water. And what we're gonna do is turn this all the way left and basically make it black and white. Now I also wanna add some texture since you can see there's a lot of grit to the ground. I want to add a little bit of clarity. So we can pump it up. This is gonna be a lot to handle. It's gonna you know, be super distracting, go kind of crazy. So I'm gonna do you know, maybe like under 30, somewhere there. Um, and my computer is loading a bit slow due to filming the video. And then if we want, we can also dehaze, which will um, add a little bit of contrast, also kind of a little bit of clarity and uh, have a set there. So. That is pretty solid, so we can see if we turn it off and we turn it on, there is uh, a little bit of a difference in the ground. It's a little bit more textured and makes the car um, pop off a little bit more nicely, right? So that is just one edit right there. Of course, you can change the contrast. You can change you know, the color of the ground and the tint of the uh, color as well if it's in black and white, but this is nice. Let's say, for example, we want to make the bottom of the car a little bit brighter. We could um, hit uh, new brush right here and then exposure and this is going to go up and we can just brush in a little bit of a brighter exposure right here right so let's say the part of the car is just a little bit dark I'm just going to show you an extreme example but you know as you put more time in and uh, work into the details you can bring a lot of uh, small details back so like right here where it says Mazda you can make that brighter you can do a whole bunch of stuff or you know if you want to make uh, blacks darker add more contrast you can do that as well so just keep that in mind um, here you can see it's a subtle edit but it adds a little bit more definition to the ground and uh, also added a little bit of a highlight down here uh, and a darker mark. So um, this is just kind of getting started with selections up top. Uh, next episode, I'm gonna show you how to do a sky edit. And more importantly, I'm gonna show you how to create a preset. So you can see that I've made my own preset. I call it Desert Sky. And uh, if my computer doesn't go crazy here, I'll be able to show you that in most images, I'm able to get a little bit of the sky back and add a little bit of drama to the photos. So you can see, Here's the before and after. So the photo on the left, you know, the sky is just all white and blown out. Uh, and then on the bottom, we have some texture uh, from the road, but not that much. And then on the right, we added a little bit of the sky back here. We can edit this, so we'll talk about this next week. Uh, and then we have some more um, uh, contrast in the ground and detail on the actual road. You can, if you want, you know, in Photoshop, use content to wear fill or spot removal and get rid of a lot of these smaller puddles. If I was sending this image to a client, I'd probably get rid of this because it kind of looks like the car is leaking since you can't tell that it's uh, from the rain. I promise it was. Um, I really hope it was at least for my wallet's sake. But anyways, that was uh, episode two of Shooting Cars. If you watched this far, thank you so much. Uh, definitely go out and shoot, you know, take the tips from this tutorial in episode one and put them to good use. Send me what you shoot on Instagram. Uh, DM me at a car photographer. I'd love to see it. Leave a comment down below. Or, uh, you know, if you have any questions, just shoot, shoot me a message on there as well. Next episode, again, coming out next Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to talk a little bit more about creating presets like this so that then in about 20 seconds you could get the sky back. And uh, I will see you guys next Thursday. So make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. And uh, if we hit 10,000 subscribers by June, let's say, honestly, this is right on the spot, uh, I might give away... Uh, 
a camera uh, for a automotive photographer or maybe some polarizers or a tripod, something like that. I'll figure it out, but please share this video. Uh, let's try to hit 10,000 subscribers soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.